All right, so if you guys been trying to get a divot in front of the golf ball and you try to keep your weight to the left side as you go into the back swing, but as you make a swing, it ends up doing this. Oh man, that divot went 20 feet. That is the most frustrating shot in golf. I came in very steep. I hit hard behind the golf ball. You look up and the ball's only rolled a few feet dribbling down the fairway. Extremely frustrating. I'm gonna talk about why you don't wanna keep your weight to the left when we're getting rid of the chunk and hitting behind the golf ball and two things that you do need to do to hit those balls dead solid clean. Let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so there's two main things that I see when people are struggling hitting behind the golf ball time and time again. So the first is, as I set up this golf ball, my weight is falling away from the target. My right shoulder gets lower and closer to the ground and you can see if I start to fall back away from this golf ball, how everything is working down into the ground and I could very easily chunk behind the golf ball. We obviously don't wanna do that. Now, what usually leads to this is when people try to keep their head still or try to stay stacked over top of the golf ball, a lot of times there's always a cause and effect in golf. So whenever I'm trying to stay to the left, a lot of times I'll fall to the right. Let me give you a good example of this. Let's imagine I'm setting up over this golf shot and I'm gonna to try, to, try to keep my head left or my weight left because you're probably thinking, you probably found yourself thinking, I'm gonna to try to stay left, that way I'm ensuring that I get down and through the golf ball. It's a pretty common thing, but a, a big mistake that I see. When I do this, now I'm staying left, staying left, staying left, and naturally my body senses, I'm too far left. I'm not gonna be able to hit this ball with any power, and it starts to fall back to the right, and everything gets in behind the golf ball. So it looks something like this. I'm left in the backswing, and then I'm falling back right as I make the downswing. Well, in reality, I wanna load up on my right side and then come through just like I'm throwing a baseball or a football into my left side in the follow through. So what I want you to do here is I want you to imagine with your head that you're looking into the back of the golf ball. We're gonna get a little bit of spine tilt. This is something that I go over in the Top Speed Golf System talking about the stable fluid spine. That's something I talk about a lot. And I'm gonna get behind this golf ball. Now from there, as I make my backswing, I feel like I'm pushing into the ground with my right foot. So I should feel some pressure all in the inside of my right foot. That's gonna get me behind the golf ball. And then from there, I can shift all the way on through to my left foot coming through. And I'm gonna make sure my belt buckle and my chest are nice and high as I come on through. So my belt buckle is facing the target, my chest is nice and high and rotated all the way on around. That's gonna ensure that I'm not falling back away from the shot. If I lean left and then fall back away, you'll see that I'm not gonna come through the shot. All my weight's gonna be on my right foot versus inside the right foot, all the way on around to the left foot coming through. So that's the first thing I see. The second thing I see is not enough forward shaft lean. A lot of times when we're falling back, we stand up and we start to cast the club. We start to flip this golf club and that makes it easy to hit behind the golf ball. I wanna have some forward shaft lean as I'm coming through the shot and to release the club. I'm gonna give you a secret that nobody told me for a long time. I've seen thousands of people that struggle with this same thing. I'm gonna give you a secret here that will really help you to get more forward shaft lean than you've ever had before. If my club, if I'm used to squaring up the club with my club straight up and down, so now my club shaft is straight up and down, my face is dead square to the target here, there's two ways I can square this. That's the first way where I'm squaring the club out by releasing the shaft. And when I, when I release this club shaft, so this is forward shaft lean, when I release that, that squares the face. If I was to do nothing different with my wrist and just lean the face forward, lean the shaft forward. You can see that now that my face is wide open. So when I see most people trying to get more forward shaft lean, they're opening the face wide open. So that's the incorrect way to square the face. What we need to do is we need to square the face by rotating our hands. Take a look at my left hand. I'm gonna rotate it down to the ground. Really, really exaggerated there. I wanna rotate my right palm down to the ground. And when my club's parallel with the ground, you're gonna see this leading edge exaggerated pointing down to the surface here. And that's gonna really get me to close that face. If I was to do that and then have the flip, look how left my face is going. My face is going so far left, that ball is gonna shoot almost at a 45 degree angle straight to the left. I'm obviously not gonna to wanna to do that. And I square up the face by getting forward shaft lane. Notice how my hips are nice and open as I'm doing that too. So as I, I want you to go ahead and do this two-step drill. Number one, I'm gonna rotate the face down as it's parallel with the ground in the downswing. Number two, I'm gonna pause at impact with the face square behind the ball, tons of forward shaft lean, and we can see that's nice and squared up. Put both these drills together. 
I'm going to do 100 reps going to the inside of my right foot, looking down at the back of the ball, and then swinging all the way through to the left. I'm going to do 100 reps getting this club face closed, pausing, hips open, lots of forward shuffling, face dead square. And then from there, I'm going to put both those pieces together for another 100 reps, so 300 total reps getting some forward shaft lane, getting my momentum going through the shot. Now when I put all three of those together, I'm going to hit a dead solid shot. I'm going to take a nice little divot in front of the golf ball and it's going to feel a whole lot better with a lot more forward shaft lane. Let's go ahead and try it out. There we go. Got a little bit of a divot, kind of roughed up the turf in front. You can hit down a little bit harder if you have a tendency to, to kind of fall back and hit behind the ball, golf ball, but you can definitely see I was coming down and through. I got the, the ball first, and then I caught the turf in front of that golf ball. So go ahead and work on those drills. And get those practice reps in. It's really going to help you guys out. I'll see you all soon. All right, guys, hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a great bonus for you. I'm going to include one of my number one videos, a preview of my number one video on increasing your lag, and it's all in the takeaway and getting the proper amount of wrist set. So I'm going to play a preview of that video. It pops up here in a second. If you want to see that entire video, plus you're going to get five videos from our Top Speed Golf system, go ahead and click the link that pops up in your screen or down below in the description if you're on a mobile device. So if you're on a mobile device, open up the description below and you can click the link there. Good luck to you guys. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Be sure to click that thumbs up button. That really helps us to grow the channel. And also remember to subscribe. That way you'll see our latest videos. I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag. And then we're gonna to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case. And I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I want to use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.